Welcome to the Daily Jerry Anderson podcast, where the presenter is concerned about the hospitality offered from our own wee country to the MTV Award winners. What will they think of us in England? That's Can right. you imagine that? MTV Awards, November the 6th. The whole world comes here. By behind the bar, this woman comes up, dressed as a coffin. What about you, love? Uh, can I have a drink, please? What's your name, love? I'm Lady Gaga. Sorry, love, the bar's closed at half twelve. <laughs> 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 Sorry, love, no exceptions. Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, oh, t- t- tell me what's happening about, about the bar. What? What I heard very briefly about, uh, about the licensing law, is it? Closing the bar at half so, twelve. Uh, on what night? Is it a Saturday night? I can't. It's Sunday night, I think it is. Wouldn't be a Sunday night. I I ask, it's November 6th. Sunday night. It is, yeah. is it? It's a Sunday night. Yeah. And they're closing the bar at half twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine it? I love this country. Mm. Would you imagine? And uh, apparently, well, I'm not going to say anymore because I no, don't know. Don't. But it's great, isn't it? Yeah. Well, sorry, love. I'd love to give you a drink. Tell you what. I know a fellow, a taxi driver there. Look, he'll go and get you a bottle of wine. <laughs> and just give him an extra five. And he get you a pack of fags as well. <laughs> Here, phone a cab. Yeah, Tim, go like, on here, look at a drink. The, the, bring, bring, bring a bottle of Concord and 20 Mayfair. But you? Did, have you noticed I'll give that you have absolutely... Look, I'll be all right, I can vouch for her. Her name is, what's her name? Lady Gaga. That's all right. No, it's a funny name, isn't it? Jeez, but I don't know. Some of these names, these people here. Uh, Dubby's uh, is here as well. And, and uh, Woolly Am. All the employees, you know. All rappers. Tell you what, bring two bottles of Concord. Uh, I'll tell you what, make it 40 Mayfair because some of them might want to be smoke, you know. They're all out there. There's all out there. There's like snow out there, so what is that? <laughs> if, hu- if she had a husband, let's say she had a husband. Mr. Gaga. I, what would he be? No, he, no, she's Lady Gaga. So what would he be, sir? Lord Gaga. Lord, he'd be Lord. Lord, Lord Gaga. Gaga. Tales of the music world's aristocracy reminds the presenter of one of his favourite stories a story which has surprisingly few different endings. This is an indication that it is likely to be true, but he has been thwarted by a combination of fox and shuttlecock. Uh, I was in a hotel in London one time. It's the Kensington Hilton, actually, down in Holland Park. Very nice hotel. Uh, BBC people stay there because it's dear. Yeah. <laughs> and I was at the... Oh, what about the gear? Eh? Oh, sorry. Sorry for interrupting you. I really am sorry. I'm sorry about this. I know you're in full flow, but Betty... Betty, Betty has to go and play badminton, and she's on one. And this is stopping me telling the story. Yeah, but she, she's got a badminton court booked. That's not my response. Yeah, but Emma told me to, 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 to get this call on immediately. I'll finish the story later. Yeah. Then. Well, what, what story is it? Did I make a note? No, what, seriously. What, I'll remember what it is. Uh, the Kensington Hotel. Kensington Hilton. Kensington Hilton. Make right. a note of that. Kensington Hilton. Come, ba- come back to me on it. Okay. Hello, good morning, Betty. Hello, Jerry. I believe you've booked a badminton court, and that's very hard to say at this time of the morning. <laughs> Daddy's badminton court is booked. <clears throat> yes, we, we played half ten, Jerry, and I'm just holding on to speak to you. The shuttlecock awaits. <laughs> OK, then tell me what you want. It's so well, urgent to stop me telling the story. Well, Jerry, I have a fox coming, taking my hands. And I want to see if there's someone that could give me a loan off or make me um, a fox trap. Fox. Not a snare, no, the fox trap where they can go into, you know. Because uh, I took another one yesterday after lunchtime. Cheeky monkey. No, isn't he? Cheeky monkey. <laughs> I can't and think of a... I've never heard of a fox trap. Uh, yes, there I've is. heard of a fox trot. Mm. I've never heard of a fox trap. <laughs> yes, there is, Jerry. <laughs> well, you know, it's a pity... What? Is it the fixin' or the fox? Which, well, some, Have some, you sexed some, this fox? No, but someone, someone... Someone will come and take one. Either the vixen will come and take a, a single uh, hen, There's a bird, chicken. Right, yeah. But the fox comes and uh, thinks and kills everything. Oh, aren't, men, aren't men the same? I think that's the way it is. Someone Women will just take what think... they want. Men will just take everything. <laughs> mm. Give well, them a then, nice little so yard. Do you, Betty, do you want to trap the fox and then take him and release him somewhere? Yes, I uh, give him to someone else, yeah. else well, then. You to... trap the fox and bring it upstairs to your bedroom and torture it. <laughs> Oh, no, couldn't do that, Jerry. No. What a great laugh. Give, give us that laugh again. I met... Go on. Oh, no. Go on. Go on. Oh, no. Give no. us that laugh again. Go on, go on. Oh, Jerry. <laughs> how many I must hands say, have you, I Betty? must say, Jerry, now, there's days that I am sort of down at times, as everybody is, and once I start listening to your show, oh. I start to laugh, and I go down the road at times <laughs> and laughing away, 
and I say, people see me in the car, they'll think there's something wrong with me. That's lovely, Betty. But thank you have you. a fantastic show to lift up people, Jerry. Oh, I must tell you that. Now, you, you and Sean much. both. Oh, thank you. Even, you're, even Sean as well. You're a great item together. You definitely are. Now, but you need to get on with my thing about the fox now, because <laughs> the girls are waiting on me. Mr. Coyle's piece of string tied around his middle finger has worked. He remembers the exact point from where the presenter takes up the story. Roll it, rushing. Kensington Hilton Hotel. Kensington Hilton Hotel. I was uh, in the lobby, having a little drink, of course, looking around me, and there was people who used, every once in a while there'd be an announcer. We're talking about Lord Gaga, Lady Gaga, and what her husband would be called. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I had heard somebody had said to me that uh, Meatloaf was staying. Ah, <laughs> not that story. <laughs> I like that it. story. Don't stop me. I like that story. There are new listeners. I'll tell them. you what they do. I'll All tell you. I'll tell you what they do. Why don't you just stop it there and get people to ring in and give the anthem? No, that's been sarcastic. No, but I'm telling you now. No, that's been sarcastic. It's been nasty. There are it's new not. listeners. There are new listeners now since I told that story last. Many of the listeners have died. So I'm going to say this. Whilst I was sitting there, mm. over the announcement came over the telephone call for Mr. Loaf. Telephone call for Mr. Loaf. Do you not like that's funny? No, it was different the last time you told it. Telephone call for Mr. Loaf. Get it? Meat Loaf. Uh, Good morning, Meat. (laughs) Uh, No, I've actually said, what's your name? Meat Loaf. Call me Meat. No, there was something. (laughs) Call me Mr. Loaf. Anyway, a gentleman says to me, uh, uh, I've got a little note there. A gentleman says he came up to our city over the weekend uh, to see the opening of the Peace Bridge. And he came on the train. He said he thought he'd never get. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, "Can I?" Comp- I was doing this this morning. He said, "Can I compose a verse of the, you know that song? What do you call that song that mentions you in it?" Um, as the train pulls up today <laughs> from Derry City. So I, 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 he asked me to compose another verse. So I've composed another verse. This is it. As the train crawls out today <laughs> from Derry City, twenty miles an hour to Belfast. That you should have a beard already is such a pity. You could have grown one on the train to pass the time. <laughs> I should have been Belfast there. Now you're waiting for it. You see what I, I did there? The to I, I, no, but I went the other way. Ah, you did? No, right? I went the other uh, way. Yeah. You see, because sometimes when there's an obvious verse coming up, you go the other way. I always do that. Here, listen, there's a gentleman here upset. Uh, Cherry, my world as I know it has ended. Someone has removed from YouTube the video of giant haystacks throwing Jackie Fullerton down on the studio floor. Somebody's removed that. Could you believe that? Somebody's removed that from YouTube. That's on a long, long time. I know, but it should have been there until hell froze over. OK, he may have nearly broken Jackie's back, but let's face it, Jackie got a new heart and a singing career, and giant haystacks is now dead. So, Jackie got the last laugh, which is more than I'll now get. When I was depressed, I used to watch that clip over and over again and wet myself laughing. Thanks a lot, YouTube. That man feels as if something's been... Taken away from him. Shocking news this morning. Mr Coyle has announced that he might later announce that he may retire from the radio. The presenter suspects that there may be a troubled soul somewhere under that eyebrow. But it hasn't stopped him organising a collection. I'm going very soon. I'm leaving you very soon. I'd, you I'd, mean to that great no, no, golf I've, club in the sky? I decided, funny enough... Uh, Are you resigning from the BBC? Yesterday, yesterday... I decided it's time to go. And as I sat eating my porridge this morning, I says, I might make an announcement on the Wee Show. Do you mean to go to the toilet? As to when I'll go. No, I might Are retire. Are you serious? Yeah, I might retire. Retire? Yeah. I might pack it all in. I just feel that way. I feel that it's been dragged out of me. You know, it's... The spark's gone. I think it's time to... Spark. Bo- uh, I think it's time to head a ball up the fairway. The spark has gone 15 years ago. I know, but it's really gone now. Are you serious? Yeah. So I don't know. Many of the listeners will be delighted. I know that, so I think it's... I want you to think this over because, after all, you know, many's a man made a rash decision to oh, retire I know and that. That's found himself, I, found himself I, looking no, out the is, window of the is, rain. This has been festering in me now for the past number of months, and I think, yeah. Well, you haven't got enough money. I know. That's what's keeping do? me. That's the only thing that's keeping me. <laughs> <laughs> what about your pension pot? <laughs> <laughs> or should I be out in strike today? I think you should. Pensions? I think you should. I think you've been treated abominably. So do I. I and so have I. I'm going out in strike. That's it. That's everybody <laughs> out. Everybody yeah. out. 
The vultures are gathering to pick over the bones of Mr. Coyle's radio career, first to look for the job as Benedict. There is a procedure to be gone through. There will be. There will be forms to fill in for the applicants. And uh, I'll just have to take it as it comes. And, and I can show no favouritism. After all, this is the BBC, and you'll just have to join the queue with the rest of them. But I'm the best. Well, you see, you'll have to prove that to me in the interview process. Well, what, well can, can we ask him what type of music? Say say you were left in charge, right. Gary. Right. Uh, what, what, what music would you play? Well, there's good tunes out there that you never play. Go on. Give me some pogues. Give me men that couldn't hang. Give me the saw doctors. God. Give me ghost don't shave. I'm sorry, uh, our time is up. I'd love to talk to you a little further, but I'm afraid there are other people on the line. And although I admire your choice in music, I don't think I can have you about the place, if I may quote Lord Brookborough. Or Gar- uh, Gareth... Mr. Anderson, I don't like you anymore, then. What about, what about Gareth fired. Brooks? Who? <laughs> Gareth Brooks. Puke. <laughs> no, listen... Can Listen, I say to if you like Gareth Brooks, you go on and pick Hugo's job over. Hugo's job is not available because Hugo's more sense than to go anywhere because he knows there's nowhere to go. <laughs> Sean, you should, know, you should know that, Sean. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go. Tell me this, Jerry. One U- week question. U105. There's a lot of dead hedgehogs. There are a lot of dead hedgehogs. Many of them are working for the BBC. Where are they coming around the street? Where are they coming out of? And they're wee faces of scratches. Cats killing them. I don't know. There's loads of them, but the wee faces are scratched off by cats. Oh. No, but you see, are they really? But you see, maybe there's a, it's an infestation. I mean, you, you know that. Uh, g- give me a hedgehog, and you'll see about a thousand fleas. Maybe there's maybe the, the flea uh, population has risen and eaten them to death. Is that in Belfast, Gary? It's in Anderson's Town. Anderson's Town. Well, not necessarily well known for its uh, hedgehog Hedgehogs. population. Yeah. Well, maybe perhaps you we get could three dead every every day. Three a day. Hmm. Talk to the hedges. Must be living in the hedges or something. But well, I'll, I'll tell you what we can do. The faces and the noses are scratched off. It must be cats killing them. Or no, what? maybe they scratch themselves. Because I mean, I, I observed a hedgehog. Could be rats day. killing them. No, do you know what I think it is? Hmm. Now, for instance, I had uh, the opportunity. I've got a garden, you see, which I, that nobody ever goes into. Yeah. And I have a garden. I don't think I've been into it for like two years. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And the hedgehog lived at the bottom of it, and the hedgehog thought that there was nobody living in it. Right? So the hedgehog <laughs> spent all its time walking around the garden, knowing in its heart and soul that it would never be disturbed or never meet anyone, and he thought it was his garden. So the wonderful thing was, you never get that in any garden. No hedgehog will do that because they, they, they avoid humans. Now, I was able to sit and look out my patio windows. Did, did, did you not cut Excuse the grass? Me, my patio windows. Did you not cut the grass? No, I got a man to do that every once in a while. Oh, God, I love right. you. Yeah. But he never actually saw anybody go out and spending time in the garden. Oh, the yeah. hedgehog would say to himself, Gee, there's a boy coming to cut the grass, so I'll be away in an hour. Yeah. You see, and then nobody ever else ever came. So I was able to observe him, and he spent 99% of his time scratching his arse. He cannot. <laughs> Not be all his spikes, how can he scratch himself? <laughs> I'm telling you. How does he put it? To where, where, what does he scratch it with? His wee front back leg, leg, his back leg. Back put legs. It. He's going all the time. He'd rip the paw of himself. Well, apparently what happens is there are so many fleas that they spend 95% of their time scratching themselves. And if there's any increase in the flea population, it goes over the line. And this is what might have happened because of the... Listen, Mr Anderson, do I get the job or not? I can't say it because there's a BBC process to be gone through. That's all for today. Thank you for listening. All applications for Mr Coyle's post should be sent to Jerry Anderson, care of Old People's Home... BBC, Ormo Avenue, Belfast.